Christmas, my friends, and welcome to worship on this first Sunday of Christmas. Our service today is a little bit unusual, so I would invite you to light a candle and, and have sort of a, a sacred setting for this time. You want to gather a few supplies today as well. A Bible, maybe a journal and a pen, or a conversation partner for anything you might want to discuss related to today's service and three sticky notes that you'll be using for a part of a prayer practice later on in the service. If you received an email inviting you into this worship service, there was a, a handout attached, and you might find it helpful to print that out, and it's got the words of the poems as well as the prayer prompts that we will be reading. If you don't have that, if you've found us another way, don't worry. We will walk you through this. You will be able to listen and hear and fully join let us come now into this time of worship on this first Sunday of Christmas. Welcome. Good morning and welcome to Community Presbyterian Church on this Christmas weekend. Christmas may have felt a little differently and we may have celebrated in a different way than in years past, but the reason for the season is always the same. God's good gifts are ours to enjoy. God came to the world as a child bringing hope, peace, joy, and love. And like Simeon and Anna who dreamed, who believed, and then saw the Christ child in their lifetime in the temple those thousands of years ago, we hold steadfast in our belief in God's promises. If you attended the Christmas Eve service, you may have seen a rainbow that appeared over a stand of trees on the side of the church. How perfectly timed and how beautifully placed it was that was such a reminder of God's promise to us. Would you join me in prayer? Dear God, you keep your promises and we are so grateful. This year brought us so many challenges, but it was also filled with stories of hope and of selfless acts of courage and love. We know that you are in the middle of all things. Draw near to us even as we draw closer to you. In this new year, surround us, protect us, ignite our imaginations, and fuel our optimism as we dream dreams of justice, of hope, and of love. Amen. Good morning, Sunday School students. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. If you tuned in at the beginning and you heard the welcome, you heard me mention two names, Simeon and Anna. Our lesson today comes from the book of Luke, and it's about promises. So as we come into the new year, a lot of us will make New Year's resolutions, which are basically just promises we make to ourselves. Promises to do something maybe better than we did the year before. Whether it's to read more, whether it's to watch less um, stuff on TV, whether it's to do less gaming, whether it's to learn a new language or play an instrument, whatever it may be, to eat healthier food, whatever. Sometimes those promises are hard to keep. The great news in all of this is that God always keeps God's promises. So I told you this was about Simeon and Anna. Well, in the Bible, in the book of Luke, we're introduced to Simeon. He is an old man, he's in the temple, and with him there is a woman named Anna, who is a prophet. She is there to pray and to worship. At that time, Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus into the temple to be blessed and dedicated to God. And when Simeon saw the baby, Simeon knew in his heart who this was, that this was the Savior that God had promised. And he thanked God for keeping that promise. Well, Anna heard it as well, and she was overjoyed and she spread that news to others. God keeps God's promises. So we may struggle with the promises we make to others or to ourselves, but we never have to worry about God keeping those promises. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you that you always keep your promises. Surround us with your love. Help us to know that you're always there. You can help us. You can be our strength. You can help us to keep our promises to others and to ourselves. And we thank you for that. Amen. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy Bro. 
of God, prepare your hearts for the prayer of confession. O God, in Christ you were born a humble child, love made flesh, God with us. Forgive us when we fail to follow in your way of humility, love, and peace. Free us to see your light reflecting in the faces of friends and family, neighbors and strangers, enemies and friends and make us shine forth with your love. Amen. Hear now the word of God as we hear the story of the presentation of Jesus in the temple as told in Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what was stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation to the, gen- for the, for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel and of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. Friends, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Amen. I would like to share with you now a different account of that story, and it's found in a book called The Book of Witnesses by David Kossoff, and it's published by by HarperCollins. It's quite an old book, written in 1971, and this man, he would tell stories that he heard from Scripture as an eyewitness to those stories. So the character in this story is named Jethro. He's over 70, of medium height and rather spare, His face is arresting, 
very pale and thin-skinned, with a gentle, almost saintly expression, but with alert, bright brown eyes. The hair and beard are pure white and fine in texture. The voice is silvery, clear, precise. The hand gestures are graceful and small. Hear now the story of Jethro. Sometimes people tell me that my life spent inside the temple somehow has shut me off from the world outside. I explain that this is not so, that the world outside, as it were, comes in. Neither is the world inside an unchanging one, any more than the world outside is. Many changes, many. It was like a small town, the temple, a village, very high walls, as somebody once said, but many gates. A wonderful feeling of shelter, of safety, a haven. As people grew old, they would try to live close to the temple and they would spend all their days within the walls. They had their place. They were honored, shown great respect. At that time, just before Herod died, most of my work was in the inner part of the temple where the old people sat near the inner court where the babies were brought for the ceremony of presentation. It was pleasant to see young parents and their babies and our older residents, as we called them, all together sharing the joy. Some of these were grand occasions with large families bringing huge offerings of animals for sacrifice and gifts of every kind. But the kind I liked best were the poor people who were allowed by the law to bring as their gifts a pair of young pigeons or turtle doves. Always shy, such young people always overawed, and nearly <coughs> always put at their ease by one or the other of our old residents. Some of these old ones were famous. Two I remembered well. One, Anna, was said to be a prophetess, very old indeed, very devout. She lived in the court of women. She had married young but had been widowed after only seven years. She gave her life to God soon after. When I first met her, she must have been nearly 80, a great quality of stillness, of repose. It was very easy to believe that she could see into the future, that she knew more than others, but she was not remote. She was kind and of a sympathetic nature. People confided in her. She was interested, a good listener. She knew all about her old friends. She'd been there longer than any of them, she knew them well. Often we would talk of one or of another of a favorite of mine, Simeon, another very old resident. Like Anna, also surrounded by legend, also famous. He, it was said, had been told by God that he would not die until he had seen and touched the Messiah, the Savior of Israel, the one given by God. Simeon was regarded as a bit of a joke by some of the other older ones, but not by Anna. Simeon is very old, she said to me once, but he is close to God, and God knows him well. I sleep little, she said, but lately I dream, and I think that soon I will lose my old friend Simeon. She would say no more, and I tried to put it from my mind, but I found I was making it my business to be near Simeon whenever I could. He liked to sit in the sun, looking at the people go by, as he put it. I don't know quite know what I expected. It could be anybody. He spoke to many, a friendly man. Apart from young fathers, all sorts of people, holy men and soothsayers and seers and prophets were no stranger in the temple. All sorts of learned, close-to-God teachers and preachers were constantly passing through. So I watched carefully who Simeon met, and how he reacted. Well, I was there when it happened, when he met the one that would allow him to die happy. I shall never forget his face. The moment had come, the sign so long awaited. And yet it was strange. When it came, as it, it was at once astonishing and ordinary. You will understand better when I tell you what I mean if I tell you a little bit more about Simeon and about myself too. I have worked in the temple all my life, as my father did and his father. I began when I was 15 and finishing my education within the temple. The elders and teachers in the temple were men of vast knowledge. 
My first duties were all to do with ritual and the services and festivals. People came from all over the world to Jerusalem to see great Herod's temple, a pilgrimage, a wonder. But soon I began to know the regulars, the members of the congregation who never missed every Sabbath, every feast, every fast, the devout. And Simeon was one. I was about 20 when I first met him. About 50 years ago, and he was elderly then. He was kind to me. I had much to learn, and he knew all the services by heart. He was a very highly respected man, and when we first met, much involved in the community and charity work. He did less as the years passed and spent more and more time in prayer and with the scriptures. It was a great part of his life to join in the ceaseless discussion among the elders and the teachers on the hidden meaning of the great history of the books of the temple. The writings and the prophets, the written down visions of the sages and the seers of long ago. He would meditate for hours, almost in a state of mystical trance, often during a long fast. As the years passed, he confided in me more and more. And one day, and this must nearly be 40 years ago, he told me he was now sure that a savior of Israel was expected. It is written, he said, it is shown in the books. One will come anointed by God, a Messiah, a leader. He was lit up by the thought. Well, he wasn't the first to express such wish thoughts. He was... He was, at the time, there was a great hunger in the people for a new and simpler way, a kinder way. Great Herod was a hard king. Life was harsh, full of rules and regulations, which had crept into God's laws. But he wasn't finished. It has also been shown to me, he said, that I will not die until I have seen the one sent by God. He said it quite simply. He had not been very well, and he was quite old, but there was a sort of positive strength in him. From then on, he lived in a state of expectancy, waiting. At first, he spoke only to me about this conviction he had, but then the others heard of it, and some thought Sinian was now senile as well as old. But one morning, about five or six years after this vision, he was in the temple earlier than usual. It was about a month after Anna had spoken of her dreams. Today, he said, it will be today. I have been told and I am ready. He sat in his usual seat near the inner court where the parents brought their babies for presentation to the Lord's ceremony, a weekly thing, part of my job I watched carefully. Many of the young fathers and their brothers or friends were fine, godly-looking men, but Simeon sat on. Then a poorly-dressed couple approached, a woman rather younger than the man carrying her baby son. The man carrying a modest offering allowed by the law of Moses, a pair of doves. Simeon got to his feet. He was trembling, and I went nearer in case I should need to help. He went forward, not as I thought, to bow low to the man, but gently to take the baby in his arms. He stood and lifted his face and spoke to God as to a loving friend who'd kept a promise. He blessed God. And thanked him. Now I can die in peace, he said. I have seen him and held him in my arms. He spoke on of salvation, of a truth for all people, of a standard too high for many, of one who would see into men's hearts and bring many a great joy. And then he stopped and he looked into the face of the young mother. But you, he said, and tears came into his eyes. For a sword to pierce your very soul. The young woman was transfixed, amazed. I don't think she'd understood most of what he'd said. Neither had I. Simeon blessed them and went away, back to Bethlehem. Simeon died soon after, and I missed him. Friends, will you join me now as we unite our thoughts? in some reflection prompts as we think about this scripture that we have just heard and the story that allowed us to look a little deeper into it. One way to study scripture is by asking questions that begin with who, what, why, and how. You'll find these questions on this handout if you have it, but if not, allow your thoughts to linger here. 
Who are the people and places involved in this scripture? What is happening here? What does this story teach us about? Why did the people do what they did? Why was this story included in the Bible? How does this story compel me to action? How does this story help me to learn about God? Notice the characters in the story. For each character, imagine what emotions they might be feeling. Which character or characters do you relate to most? Mary, Joseph, Simeon, or Anna? The text says that Simeon was moved by the Spirit. Have you ever felt moved by the Spirit? What does that look like for you? Both Simeon and Anna, and Anna publicly display their faith, telling all who will listen about Jesus and their dreams for Jerusalem's future. What things do you speak up about? What things have you remained silent about? What prevents you from speaking? Who in your life has been an Anna or a Simeon for you? What did they speak about and how did their profession change you? Finally, focus on the now what. What is your takeaway from the story? What are you charged to do or think or feel? Friends, I know I went through that a little bit quickly and maybe not enough time for reflection. So feel free to pause this, to go back, to hear those stories as you need to. If you've got a piece of paper in which to reflect and perhaps journal on, again, take the time you need to allow this story to wash over you, to swim about in your mind, to enlighten your life, to animate your faith, to think about what it is that God is calling you to do and how you are changed by encountering this story in the pages of Scripture. We're now moving to our creative reflection around the poem Swell. If you have a handout, you can follow along there, or you can follow along on the screen. I'm going to ask you to listen for the words or phrases that stand out to you, to think about what topics of conversation create a swell of emotion for you, and what things you are so passionate about that you cannot help but speak them out loud. Don't worry about those because I will repeat them again. You know that feeling when you fall in love? Time stands still and moves too fast. You'd give up sleep just to talk all night because there's so much to say and not enough time. It's that full to the brim, over the stars, living is dreaming, too good to be true kind of feeling. I imagine that's how Simeon and Anna felt when they saw Jesus that day. I imagine it was that full to the brim, over the stars, living is dreaming, too good to be true, good news kind of feeling. I imagine it was love. I imagine that good, good news swelled to the tip of their tongues until they could not keep silent. So may we know what Simeon and Anna knew, which is that some dreams we hold close to our chest for ourselves to cherish and never forget. But other dreams must be spoken out loud, dreams of justice and love and hope here and now. So today my prayer is to know that swell for there is good, good news that we must tell. Friends, as you look at the poem, either in your handout or on the screen, look for those words or phrases that stand out to you. And think about what topics of conversation create a swell of emotion for you. And 
What things are you so passionate about that you cannot help but speak them out loud? We have heard scripture and story and poetry, and they all speak about dreams. There are some dreams that we keep to ourselves, but there are others that must be spoken aloud. Anna and Simeon speak about their dreams for Jerusalem. They speak of their dreams for the Messiah, and they just could not keep silent. To practice speaking out loud our dreams for this world, we invite you to write three things on a post-it note following these prompts. Anna and Simeon begin speaking by praising God. Write something that you are grateful for, a piece of good news worthy of praise. Anna and Simeon have dreams for a better world. Write a dream you have for the world that you need to speak about. Anna and Simeon speak and are heard, but not all people are listened to with the same equality in our world. Think of one person or group of people that are speaking, but are not being heard. And may this be a reminder that we can use our voices for and alongside others. Once you are done with your post-it note prayers, save them. We will be using them in the prayers of the people. After worship, place them somewhere where you will see them often. Take a picture of them and share them on social media, tagging a sanctified art, using the hashtag thosewhodreamsa. This will allow you to see what other people cannot keep silent about adding your voice to a wider conversation. Friends, we will now unite our hearts and minds as we gather together for the prayers of the people. You'll want those sticky notes that you wrote on for the Join the Conversation prompts with Susan. We will use those words as a part of our prayer. Join me now. Holy Dreamer, when they saw Jesus, Anna and Simeon spoke your praise. In this time, we now lift our prayers of gratitude and praise. And you can speak aloud the words you wrote on that first sticky note. Holy Dreamer, Anna and Simeon had dreams for a better world. We too have these dreams and we won't keep silent about them. We now offer our dreams to you. And you can speak those words on the second note you wrote. Holy Dreamer, when Anna and Simeon speak, their voices are heard, and what they say is received with reverence. Yet we live in a world where not all voices are heard. Instead, many are silenced. We now lift our prayers for those whose voices are silenced or muted. 
and speak aloud the prayers on your third note. Holy God, we lift all these prayers, written and unwritten, spoken and unspoken to you. Hold them with care. Give them life. Breathe your grace into them and make all things new. Amen. Anna and Simeon's professions of faith inspired those around them because they spoke their beliefs out loud for others to hear. Let us mirage their, mirror their conviction and their courage by speaking aloud what it is we believe. You'll find the words of this affirmation of faith in the handout that was included with the email for worship, but they'll also be posted on the screen so that together we might use our words to affirm what it is believe, we believe. Will you join me? We believe in telling the story. The story of a loving and merciful God who will not let God's people go. The story of a baby who grew up and changed the world. The story of our faith. We believe in speaking up. For our neighbors, for the oppressed, for the overlooked and marginalized. We believe in speaking out. Against violence, greed, abuse, fear, scarcity mindset, and bigotry. We believe in passing the mic. So that we are not the only ones speaking so that we can lift up the voices of those around us, so that we, too, might listen and learn. We believe in the good news of the gospel. We believe that this good news is too good to keep to ourselves. We believe that those who dream cannot keep silent. Speak to us, holy God. Speak through us, holy God. May it be so. Amen. My friends, receive this charge and benediction. Do not be afraid, for God is with you and will strengthen you for your journey. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory now and forever. Magnify the Lord and rejoice, my friends, for nothing is impossible with God. And the blessing of God who creates, 
redeems and restores be with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace, my friends.